Hi everyone and welcome back to the Everything MRI YouTube channel. In today's appointment we will continue talking about metal artifact reduction techniques. If you remember we have illustrated in the last video what are the initial few things to evaluate to perform a decent quality MRI scan when a patient has a metal implanted. In this session, we will take a step forward and we proceed with investigating what are the MR parameters to modify to make sure we are able to achieve a desired image quality despite potential challenges. The very first one we will focus on is a parameter pretty familiar to most MR techs. And I'm talking about the bandwidth. Altering the received bandwidth is to date the most common approach to reduce the impact of metal artifacts on our image. In MRI, this parameter refers to the range of frequencies that the MR system can process and it plays a crucial role since it basically affects the ability to accurately detect and capture the signal from the, sp from the patient's body. As a rule of thumb, we know that for some specific type of sequences, increasing the receive bandwidth might indirectly decrease the scan time as it allows shorter TR and TEs. Nevertheless, as we can see from this graph, this comes with a major drawback of a reduced signal to noise ratio as basically more noise will be sampled. Despite this potential disadvantage, a number of studies have demonstrated that the use of a high received bandwidth remains the most efficient metal artifact reduction method. And you might ask why? The reason is that doubling or even tripling the bandwidth, like for instance to a threshold between 400 and 800 um, Hz over pixel, will have a massive impact on reducing the number of in-plane distortion on our images. So we went through the differences between in-plane and through-plane distortion on our previous video. If you missed it, just click on the link in the description. So those of you that have followed the channel for a while know that rather than taking every assumption as an absolute true, we like to test this, um, making some comparison, going through some specific examples. So I would say let's keep this modus operandi for this video as well. And let's start uh, evaluating some data set of sequences acquired at different bandwidth. And here we go. We got here on the left part of the screen a coronal T1 of the hip acquired with a low bandwidth, precisely around 200 Hz over pixel. And on the right part of the screen, the same sequence, but acquired with a higher bandwidth, namely above 400. So we can immediately notice that the level of distortion is much less pronounced using a high received bandwidth. Uh, we can clearly see here the shape of the femoral lead and the acetabulum, which appear instead pretty distorted when a lower bandwidth is employed. Also, it is kind of like legitimate to say that the signal loss and the signal pile up due to the presence of the implant are fairly reduced at higher values of bandwidth. Now, increasing the bandwidth is usually combined with the use of some dedicated software designed to even further reduce the impact of metal artifacts on our image quality. As our dear colleague Manuel explained in the first part of this educational content, according to the MR machine we have available, we might be able to exploit the use of some parameters, like for instance the warp. The warp is a parameter available in Siemens scanners which enable the reduction of susceptibility artifact using high bandwidth RF pulses. Its um, use is usually associated with two techniques. The first one is called VAT, while the other one is called CMAC. So VAT, or also known as view angle tilting, is a technique that allows the user to reduce in-plane distortion by applying an additional slide selection gradient during the readout. The more we increase the percentage of the VAT, the greater will be the degree of the slice tilt and therefore its effect on our image. Generally, as we can see, this parameter does not increase the scan time, 
but it might cause, however, some blurring on our images due to the fact that the slice is not longer aligned with the image object. But let's try to understand what is the real impact of that as regards metal artifact reduction. So, left side of the screen we have our Corona T1 acquired simply increasing the receive bandwidth, but without applying any further metal reduction technique. Right side, instead, we have combined a high bandwidth with the use of VAT, specifically around a percentage of 80%. I don't know if you agree, but spotting the differences straight away as before is a little bit more challenging at this stage. If we look a little bit closer, we can notice that the signal pileup is slightly reduced when uh, the VAT has been used in conjunction with a high bandwidth. But overall, I have to say that the impact of adding VAT is kind of negligible if you have already increased significantly the received bandwidth. Plus, plus, it must be said that the VAT has the major limitation of focusing on the reduction of in-plane distortions only. To reduce the through-plane distortion instead, we need to rely on CMAC. Similarly to VAT, CMAC applies a number of additional encoding steps to correct the distortion caused by metal implants. However, these are meant to significantly reduce also those artifacts that VAT is usually not able to rectify. Bear in mind, as you can see, we can apply CMAC only if VAT is at 100%. While applying CMAC, the scan time increased by the number of phase encoding steps selected. And although the SNR grows as a direct consequence, the time of scanning, as you can see, might not be sustainable. Even reducing CMAC to a factor of 6 encoding steps only, which is the minimum value to be entered, the time required for sequence acquisition ah, is still 10 minutes. And that's why CMAC is usually combined with parallel imaging techniques such as compress sensing and ideally artificial intelligence software that can allow to reduce the scan time preserving a decent level of SNR. So here we have a direct comparison between high bandwidth sequences, one with the application of CMAC and the other one with the use of VAT only. Admittedly, in the image on the left we gain a great component of signal, Plus, the use of CMAC contributes to significantly reduce the signal loss and the signal pile up around the implant. Overall, in fact, I would say that there is a clearer vision of the profile of the implant in the sequence on the left, which, do not get me wrong, I mean, is pretty good as well with just the use, with the use of that only, but still CMAC seems to be the game-changing technique of the two. Along with all these tips related to some specific techniques for metal artifact reduction, it must be also said that altering some more, let's say common or routine parameters like the voxel size might have a certain impact on the number of metal artifacts encountered. In fact, increasing the image resolution can be beneficial not only to reduce the in-plane distortion, but also to limit the intravoxel defacing. So I would say better to keep, in, keep this in mind from an optimization perspective. Guys, before concluding this video, there is a very last comparison that I would like to show you, which I believe you might find kind of interesting. So across these two educational appointments, we have mentioned how metal implant can be made of different uh, materials, and therefore we need to be careful from an MR safety standpoint. This consideration must be also applied from an image quality point of view. In fact, some materials like cobalt chromium, just to give you an example, might generate a number of artifacts which might be difficult to offset regardless the technique we decide to adopt. And here we have an example. Despite the image quality of the sequence performed with a higher bandwidth is superior compared to the one acquired with a low bandwidth, the entity of the artifacts is such that it might be difficult to make a full evaluation of the implant and the surrounding tissues. But again, it is our duty as MR techs, MR radiographers to do all the best we can to provide the radiologists with the best image quality potentially achievable, and therefore it is good to know what are the options in our process. 
And that was the end of this video. Personally, when we made some research with Manuel about this topic, I found out that there is an entire word about metal artifact reduction, and recording this video actually helped me in learning more about it. And to be fair, this is the purpose of us sharing this, meaning extending the knowledge we have acquired to improve everyone's background as an MR professional. Having said this, guys, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, and as usual, I will see you around.